Max, you got to get inside the, the holy grail of chip makers, and you saw a particular chip getting made. I did. You know, uh, we don't we don't really think about, uh, especially server chips, which is which is what we followed in this story as being an important part of our lives. But it's a huge business, sixteen billion dollar business, and it basically runs the entire internet. So we went inside Intel, so to speak, uh -huh. uh, went in, into their factory, which is called a fab, and sort of watched watched the uh, the magic happen. And it it really is kind of magic. I mean, it's sort of amazing. You weren't allowed inside the clean room itself, but you got a sense of what it's like. The air, incredibly pure, uh, a very special kind of water they use. Uh, what's it like inside of there? What are these folks doing inside? I mean, it's incredibly, as you said, incredibly clean, incredibly quiet. I mean, any vibration would would sort of mess up the whole process and would cost the company, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. If, if one speck of dust, you know, lands on a chip, it's it's all it's, over. Yeah, it's game over. <laughs> They've lost money. Um, and so, you know, it's just it's just this very quiet, almost like it almost felt like a cathedral, which hmm. uh, is kind of a weird feeling. Um, and you know, there's just a lot of money at stake. Yeah, you talk about 2,000 steps of lithography, etching, material application, then more etching. How long does that take and who gets trained to do that? Not the developers, surely. No, so it takes about three months to go from the uh, silicon wafer. That's, positive. That's crazy. It is. Three, it, three months. Three yeah. times longer than like Boeing takes to assemble a Dreamliner. Uh, a car can get assembled in a matter of days. So, so that, I mean, this just gives you a, a sense of how, how sort of risky it is. People who do it are, are techs, basically. They've a couple years of college. Uh, of course, there are also like PhDs who are, you know, sitting there in funny outfits, like writing notes on special clean room paper, using special pens, making sure everything goes smoothly. We've heard about Moore's Law, this, uh, this idea that you get faster and faster and faster and faster as the years go on with each different iteration. Uh, what's the biggest challenge that Intel and other chip makers face right now? They've gotten so fast, they can do so much processing. Can that law continue in perpetuity? Right. So the scuttlebutt among, you know, chip geeks The chip is, crowd. Yeah, the chip crowd, <laughs> uh, very diff distinct from the marijuana crowd, yes. is, that they, um, is that Moore's Law is ending. Uh, Intel would beg to differ. I mean, basically what Intel says is like, we can keep this going for a really long time. The issue is, can we do it cheaply enough? And that's what all of the energy, all of the research, you know, t uh, billions of dollars a year are sort of pushing towards. This particular chip is the E5. What's it going to power and does Intel have a competitor in this space? So, it, strangely, uh, Intel does not really have a competitor. The company has, depending on who you're talking to, between 96 and 99 percent of the market. Basically, any data center, you know, Amazon, Facebook, uh, Google, they're all running uh, versions of this chip. And so anything you do on the Internet, if you call an Uber, if you post a, a Facebook wall post, it's, it's running through these, uh, these data center chips. So it's a great business and, and with huge margins. They're, they're making like 50 percent margins. It costs uh, more than four thousand dollars. Is it going to destroy jobs? One word. Uh, is it going to destroy jobs? <laughs> I guess I guess in a sense because you know as, as stuff gets automated uh, sure this is this is part of the you know march of, of the digital revolution.